Spirit of Texas Bank, Nissan, Slovacek Sausage, and Germania Insurance bring you this clip of the Texas Bucket List. Howdy, and welcome to the Texas Bucket List, the show dedicated to everything there is to see, do, and experience right here in the Lone Star State. My name is Shane McAuliffe, and when it comes to checking things off the list, visiting a prison in Huntsville isn't too high up there. But learning the fascinating history of these unfortunately necessary parts of society will surely lock up your interest. If you never see the inside of the Walls unit in Huntsville, consider yourself an upstanding citizen of Texas. Guys? Guys? But if you're curious as to what happens behind the tall wall, don't do anything stupid. Just take a shackle shuffle over to the Texas Prison Museum. Most of the people out there in Texas have never been in prison. So this is where you come to kind of find out what it's like. Jim Willette knows exactly what it's like because he's worked in the prison system for 30 years. Now he's the director of a museum committed to the chronicles of confinement. Back in the mid 80s, uh, some of the administration for the prison system realized that there was a lot of neat artifacts out there and they decided to gather them up and, and you know, secure them and, and preserve them. The Lone Star State started its prison program back in 1849 when the penitentiary in this part of Texas opened its doors and promptly shut and locked them. Over the years, inmates like Chief Santanta, outlaw John Wesley Harden, Bob Hayes, David Crosby, and Charlie Harrelson, father of actor Woody Harrelson, have spent time counting downtime in Huntsville. Some of their belongings can be found at the museum. Talked about Charlie Harrelson a while ago. That's a shoe that they took off of him. It's got a place in the bottom of it that he cut out where he could hide small stuff and hopefully get it transferred around the unit as he went. Then there's a showcase that presents plenty of reasons why staying out of prison is a good thing. A display that we have that people spend more time looking at than anything else is a display we have on inmate contraband. Homemade weapons, secret stashing shoes, to flip-flops you don't want to slip in. It can be scary what some folks can't imagine while in the slammer. You know, that catches everybody's attention. I guess that's one of those things, what are you going to think of next? Yeah. Kind of? Like these pistols, which aren't really pistols at all. Shane, let me take you right down here and show you my favorite display. These, these three little pistols are my favorite thing in here. They don't look like much, but they do look real. They look real for sure. And they are not. They are carved out of wood and painted. And, and it just amazes me because I don't know how anybody can be talented enough to do that. So these were done by inmates and used for an escape attempt? They were, they were made by inmates in 1964, I believe it was, at the old Walls unit. And fortunately, they were discovered before they were used. So their, their intent was to use them in the evening time and try to escape from the walls, which I know if somebody was to point one of those at me, uh, I believe I'd raise my hands as high as I could get them. Truly, that's amazing. Yeah. Made out of wood. But there are those inmates who spend their time doing things that actually contribute to society. Well, they do have a lot of time on their hands, and some of them use it um, in a good way, and and then you see some of these, which we have out some of that stuff, uh, how crafty they are and how good they are at doing crafts and, and uh, paintings and stuff such as, as that. This craft turns into a means for those that have successfully been rehabilitated. We have a nice selection of inmate made goods here for sale. Really? Yeah. You know, you've got people that get out and, and actually do make a living at, at crafts that they've gotten really good at while they were in prison. They've mastered it. You can also learn the history of the Prison Rodeo, which ran from 1931 to 1986. It was started by Lee Simmons, the general manager of the Texas prison system, as entertainment for inmates, guards, and their families. It didn't take Simmons long to see when all, a lot of townspeople showed up that he had something uh, that he could make some money out of, and, um, and did. And it just kept getting bigger and bigger every year. And, by the 1980s, the rodeo was drawing 100,000 visitors over the month of October. But the prison system couldn't keep up with the cost of maintaining the arena, so the Texas tradition came to an end. 
the city, I guess you'd say, and a lot of people here in the city that own businesses would love to see the rodeo start back up, but the prison system is totally uninterested in that. As for things I'm uninterested in, how about a look at what life in lockup would be like? So you're in here with another guy or another inmate for how long? Well, for a very minimum, the lights are out at 1030 at night. So from then till they get up in the morning, which can be as early as 430, but at least for that amount of time, but probably longer. Can you imagine you get in here with somebody who likes to listen to something that you don't like to listen to, you know? <laughs> that might be the least of my worries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it might be. Listen to whatever you want, Bob. Yeah, yeah. Whatever you want. Yeah. And you can finish your tour with a shocking exhibit, Old Sparky. You can see some people who are a little bit astonished when they see it, because it is a awesome looking chair. Used from 1924 to 1964, 361 inmates met their maker after taking a seat here, and the museum has made every effort to present the chair without any social commentary. We try not to show any favoritism for executions or against executions, and the staff knows that if someone comes up here, and it happens from time to time, that someone will come up here and have a, you know, a pretty strong comment for or against it, and we just try not to, to say much about it. Let them have their say and go on. Kind of the seriousness of it, I don't know if it really hit me just looking at it. Marty Lloyd is visiting from Minnesota. It's kind of weird, you see the old Sparky there, and honestly, I don't know that I had a real emotional reaction. It, it's not quite you expect, and I don't know that it sinks in that that's really where people died. Something about it doesn't look quite real. Between the electric chair, prison paraphernalia, and its inside look at life and lockup. The Texas Prison Museum is well worth a stop on the Texas bucket list to make sure you don't end up back at the big house. There are a lot of misconceptions about what life is like inside of a prison. I think people think in some weird way it's better than it is, and I think that uh, this can kind of tell you a lot about, you know, there's, it is not a place that you want to be. I tell people from, from Europe that come in here and they start talking about our prison system, I'll tell them, don't mess up while you're here in Texas because, you know, we'll keep you for a while. <laughs> oh, wait. I'm a free man.